Hey yo, hey yo, and welcome to The Letter. I think this is like a visual novel style spooky scary game. And uh, this game was purchased for me by a friend months ago, and he's been very angry with me that I haven't played it yet, so here I am playing it. This is me playing it right now in the present. Are you happy? <laughs> Alright, I don't know much about this game. It was thrusted upon me, but I must give you guys a um, content warning because it gave me one, but I wasn't recording it. And um, it said there is uh, violence. Um, uh, I, I assume some graphic stuff, some sexual stuff. So um, viewer discretion is advised. I don't want anyone to get upset or triggered, but you know, this is horror, anything goes. I'll censor for the YouTube gods anything that's too crazy. I am not sure if there's voice acting in this game already. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, the M... 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 You guys know I can't pronounce things. Emengard, Emengard Mansion. <laughs> it was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Emengard of Luxembourg, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Yes, humble. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew into a prosperous and bustling town. However, the season of joy the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady La La La, Lady Charlotte Emingard. <laughs> Lady. The mansion has stood since the sixteen twenties, a witness to a very long history of joy. In pain. After Lady Charlotte committed unaliving, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And that's when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the night, and hearsay of mysterious women roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legends, and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Real Real Realty Company place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Isabella. I think there's like, is it like different characters? <laughs> uh, no thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Isabella, are you there? Where are you? Why are you yelling at me? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose. I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? Oh, so there is voice acting. What do you mean, what's the matter? Oh, it has a little timer. <laughs> it's a mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Oh. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? Okay, this music is kind of loud. <laughs> Compared to, like, the voices. I'll lower that a little bit. <laughs> you chickened out! Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. Do I? Is this me? I guess I'm this character. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. I'll get there in my sweet time. Don't tell me what to do. I ain't gonna do whatever. This place I'll go. Is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since like forever, but beautiful nonetheless. And creepy. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. 
I like the art style so far. What is going on with this poster back here? This guy's creepy. It's creepier than anything we've seen so far. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. Okay. It really takes my breath away. I mean, it's probably going to take your breath away forever. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Haunted? Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. Um, we don't know. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. Have you seen any horror movie ever? They're nothing but spirits. Mm-hmm. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. Ooh. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. Um, is that... that seemed very specific. And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella! <laughs> Listen up! I think I would quit real estate at that point. <laughs> Just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Okay. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. I don't know if I should, like... Hold on. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. Who is that? Who? Oh, hello! Oh, they move! They're, like, they're breathing, like in Hoonie Pop. The eyes are a little creepy and a bit off-putting. Because <laughs> I feel like they're more detailed than everything else. <laughs> I look her. I look up from my phone and see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a questioning look. What I was gonna say is like I don't know like if I'm supposed to be the Isabella character and if I should just take off her voice a actor and read it. But um, we'll just leave it like this for now. And if we continue this story series, you guys can tell me in the comments. Oh, that it's just Rose. The one who trained you. Oh, look at the mouth. The mouth was moving. You're working together again? It's kind of weird. Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today's sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Hold on. Is <laughs> this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? There was jiggle physics. I have jiggle physics. Eh, 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 eh. I can't get him to jiggle. <laughs> Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there and you're going back? I guess. Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. Yep. Just like when I start the OnlyFans. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets off a, lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I like all the animations. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out ever since you got assigned to it. Okay, she didn't read the whole thing, and that wasn't what she said. Uh, freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Curse rumors and all. <laughs> I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus! Money is never worth it in a horror movie. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Well, you know, some people have pride. Or Ashton, we can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. 
In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect when she has that expression. Becca, I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly ra her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. I heard that the whole like ramen gives you cancer is actually not true. <laughs> <laughs> I eat other things too. You're not my man. Um, I eat other things too. Hey, I eat other things too. Ooh, there's relationships and stuff. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I used with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. So? You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Wow. Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green at the last one. I would have laughed a little at that, but I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands to her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Val. I mean, better than instant ramen. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's just better to let Becca talk until she's out of things to say. But when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly. If I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. I have trouble eating the same thing multiple days in a row. <laughs> Didn't I tell you before? You're always free to reheat my leftovers. That's not what it says down there. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ah, you and your pride. <laughs> but suit yourself. <laughs> the offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain it will n I will never take that offer. Ever. Is that foreshadowing? It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worst just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's, moves Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at something behind me, snaps me out of thought. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Okay. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! The whole class? With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins shifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lessons plan. lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever's on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sound. Ah, this is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who take who makes a habit of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets the, how to take care of herself. Hey, 
You sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I don't think medicine works that way. I level her with a flat look. She has had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left me the she even left the medicine the doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can only sigh. Why do we even bother? There is no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag and pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately to her, this is one thing I'm not letting her letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? Ugh, I hate taking medicine, especially liquid medicines and pills. There's a, an amused gleam in her eye when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the country, but... I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently everyone in Luxembourg City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of his name is enough for locals to give you a cautious, sidelong glance. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused quite a stir. I mean, who would buy that? <laughs> Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I got to sell it to like an outsider. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon. Although a quick glance at my watch tells me we still have a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life is a way of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably Ro just Rose again anyway. Rose? No, it is Ash. Catch him. Yes, oh, hello. That voice. Ash. Bingo. <laughs> hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. Ooh, what are we doing? Are you my boyfriend? You mean that thing with Zack? Oh, no. Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Are you my boyfriend? Cool. I'll see you later. Is Zack my boyfriend? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. <laughs> Wait, no, don't go! On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Oh, he's the teasing type. Shut up! Hmm. <laughs> Ash chuckles, and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. <laughs> I'll see if I can pick you up. I just realized this says Ash Hole. <laughs> Whatever. Bye. Stupid Ash Hole. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. Maybe he's into you. I'll show him who's tough. Or us. Are we her? Okay, 
there's like some buttons behind me. Okay, we have a journal. Well, those are some creepy noises. Okay, this is the today. Uh, the medicine, I guess. Okay, and then this is us. Maria Isabel Grace Cruz Santos. <laughs> 26, 52. Filipino, interesting. Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> we don't know this person. Okay. I mean, we know the person. Why does it say help over there? <laughs> okay. Okay. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. Yet, despite all of this, I don't. Un it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While Anne Slim Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Are you planning to go inside that place, Missy? I guess so. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the mansion, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. Like, get out of my cab, I want to leave. Bleatedly, it occurs to me that he must be, must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare. Without an apologetic look. I expect him to leave me as soon as I've paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Yeah. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in their house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. I mean, it would be weird to live in a house that a relative died in. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. Maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. Hmm. He drives off after, but what he said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversations to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice, anyway. There's always a choice. Always. If I want to get that bonus and commission, one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. Oh, Rose is already gone! We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone careless. Hello. Entering, what greets me inside leaves me gaping. Hello, handsome man over there. They've cleared every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook and cranny and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing and modern-day lords and ladies. To the modern-day lords. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what the other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. Or, you know, burn it down. Something... Some things in this world are better left alone. Never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? Hello? 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 I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. 
Where are you? All right, expect a jump scare, people. My voice echoes softly throughout the hallway. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property, for all I know. Quickly, I search for my phone and dial her number. Beep boop bop boop bop. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. She's in a whole other dimension. What do you mean, has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or, or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. That phrase is weird. But to no avail. Oh boy, I have a very... I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose! This isn't funny! You know this place gives me the creeps? No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. You need to turn around, go outside, look through some windows call somebody else to look. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? I didn't see anything. Not funny! I'm leaving you if you don't come out! Do it! Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going! We're gonna get locked in. Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's alright. Growing desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please give me something. Try texting. Please. Lord? Yes, finally! Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond, but there's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? You're gonna get demon voices. A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. Um, I'm... Uh, the attic? What? The attic? Why? Crap. It got cut off. Man, I do really- man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all places, she just has to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place? Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll be- I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. Hello! I love that everything is like a little bit animated. Cause you know, it's always like three pictures in these types of games. It branches out the two major wings of the mansion, east and west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side, but the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms, and attics aren't stuffy. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow and made of old stones and covered with thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. I thought they cleaned everything. Thank God it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. Without 
With how old this place is, there are, are no light fixtures to illuminate cramped passages up. Why they didn't bother to add one here when they renovated escapes me. Sheesh. They did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. It looks exactly as it did since the last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd. I thought they cleaned everything? Did the crew miss this room? <sighs> Cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. I was dreaming when I... Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, I couldn't... It couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Is she in that case over there? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Shut up, Brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here... Then where is she? Ah! <laughs> God damn it. What the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. You must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic. They said, eh, they think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish, backwater, country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning my back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. Before leaving, <clears throat> before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just to check. Huh? What's this? No worries. My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Oh. She said the title! <laughs> oh boy, she said it. We have to end it now, because it's... I don't think I'm going to be able to edit this video down like I normally would, since it's just like a constant story. So... I'm gonna try and do like 30, 35 minute intervals. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, I hope you guys like this series. And I hope my friend is happy. <laughs> and um, so far, I'm invested. This is pretty interesting. And I really like how this is like all the small touches, like the slight animation in the web, the, the particles in the light. Like, this is, there was a lot of love in this game. And I hope the story is just as great as the visuals. But for now, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!